I've been meaning to make this video for a long time, and I'm finally getting around to it. What I want to talk to you about today is something called the T-spine. And T, in this case, stands for thoracic. Um, and the thoracic spine, just so you know, is the part of the spine that starts at the bottom of the neck, right about here, and ends at the bottom of the rib cage, about here. In the first place, what goes wrong? Well, first of all, um, as you know probably, as you get older with cystic fibrosis, lung volume increases. That's just because you can't expire all of the air that you take in and something called residual volume or the leftover air in your lungs that can't get out starts, starts to kind of build up. And the result, the result of that is that you get increased um, size of your lungs because you've got a lot of dead space. So as this happens for years and years and years, there are certain mechanical, biomechanical changes that happen uh, in the rib cage and so this is all involving the thoracic spine and the, and the rib cage around it. And you develop uh, what some people call sort of a barrel chest, which is a really big chest um, that in the back has a very hunched over thoracic spine, sort of like this. And uh, in the front leads to a very big, deep chest. So increasing volumes lead to this barrel chest, but also coughing over and over and over again for years upon years upon years leads to increasing of the slouch or what's called the kyphosis or rounding hunching of the thoracic spine because I don't know about you but when I cough I don't go like this <coughs> I go like this <coughs> see the rounding so you do that year after year after year and you get even more of a rounded rib cage in addition to the barrel chestedness and finally as probably everybody in the world these days spends many, many, many hours a day either doing this in front of a computer or this in front of a phone or this hunched over a car. I mean, we really do spend a lot of our time in this position, watching TV, reading a book, doing whatever we do. So take those three problems and multiply them by years and years and years and years, and you get very significant posture problems in adults with cystic fibrosis. So that's what this video is about, is how to deal with these posture problems. Not an insignificant issue. Uh, in, in a fairly recent survey, over 90% of the people who took part in the survey said that posture issues definitely contributed to their negative self-image, uh, self-body image. Self -body image. Um, so people take this seriously, they're very affected by it um, psychologically, but also physically. If you think about it, if you're hunched over like this and your rib cage doesn't expand or contract very well, you're really limiting the amount of air you can take in and expire out. So your breathing mechanics um, also suffer from this poor posture. So what can we do about it? Good question. First of all, the most important thing you can change is to quit sitting all day, quit doing this all day. Make sure you set your phone alarm or some kind of reminder every hour or so to stand up and stretch and do some thoracic extension type movements. So what, and what that means basically is the opposite of what you do all day. So it's not this, thoracic extension is this. And finally, there are some mobility uh, exercises, very, very simple mobility exercises that if you do regularly, you can um, at least stop the progression of the increasing kyphosis, the increasing roundedness of the spine, and you can possibly reverse some of it, I think. Um, I know I've had a lot, after working on this for years now, I've been able to increase my shoulder um, extension quite a bit. No, that's not shoulder extension, that's shoulder flexion. Quite a bit after working on this, um, a lot. And there really is no reason not to give it a try. So, here's the very complicated tool you need to make. This is called a peanut. And it's essentially two tennis balls wrapped in masking tape. That's all you need. No fancy equipment. Once you get used to using this in the exercise I'm about to show you, and um, you feel like you can take it, you can substitute lacrosse balls for tennis balls. So there's a lot less give in a lacrosse ball. It's a lot firmer and you'll feel the difference. So anyway, I'm gonna show you the basic exercise to do with this peanut. Um, in subsequent vi videos, I'll give you some other mobility issues that uh, work with the back, both upper and lower back. 
as well as uh, rotation of the thoracic spine, which is also something that gets compromised in us as we get older with, with lung disease, and that we can definitely work to restore. Okay, so when I come back, I'm gonna show you how to work with the peanut. Here's what I'm gonna do. So before I put the tennis ball uh, in proper position and go through the exercise, I wanna do a pre-test. And then following that, following the exercise, I'm gonna do a post-test, and we'll see if it made any difference. So the pre-test is as follows. You lie back on the ground, like so. And reach under your back and you can feel that there's a space and that's where your lumbar spine is. So you want to press that into the ground. So basically flatten your low back into the ground, reach back with your hands and go back as far as you can and see if you can touch the ground easily. So basically start from here and reach back. And I can touch the ground, um, but I kind of feel it. So we'll see if it's any easier or what it feels like when I retest after this exercise. Uh, to begin the exercise, you take the peanut, position the groove so it's over the bony, bony processes of your spine. Start with the upper back, right at the base of your neck. Lie down. And the exercise is very simple. You simply keep the peanut where it is by putting pressure on it. And you're just going to roll up and back over the peanut five times, trying to keep it from moving. And also in the upper spine, I like to take my arms and just alternate arms, up and back. And you'll feel this. So I do that a few times. And then I push the peanut down a couple inches and work the next segment up of the thoracic spine. I'm definitely feeling this. So now I'm gonna go up five times, and then come all the way down. Now when I come down, I'm gonna hit the back of my head on the mat. So I'm really getting as much of my spine to roll over the ball as possible. That's five, and then we're gonna alternate. And what you do is you basically go through each section of your thoracic rib cage and your thoracic spine. I would say it takes about seven times to get all the way from the top to the bottom. I mean, there are 12 ribs, but each time you do this, you're pretty much covering about two vertebrae and two ribs. So now this is about the midpoint. Really starting to feel it here. Uh, uh, sometimes you get a nice crack, which feels really good. Doing the arms. The arms aren't quite as important when you get down lower because you bypass the scapula now. So they're not really in, involved in the game anymore. And finally, don't go any lower than your last rib because then you'll be in your kidneys and that won't feel good. Uh, and don't forget to go up and down. Okay, now, that should take you all of about maybe three minutes, five tops. Lie back down, retest, press your low back into the ground, reach back, and off. How much easier is it to touch your hands to the ground? Now, FYI, when I first started doing this with my peanut, I would get down on the ground, and with the pretest, I would go back, and I could only get about this far. So, A, it really works, because that was only a year or two ago, and I've been working pretty consistently on this. Um, and B, don't get discouraged if uh, when you go down for your pretest, you're not anywhere near the ground. Um, that's due to all the reasons I discussed earlier, and um, just keep working on this, and other exercises which I'll show you in subsequent videos and you'll get there. All right, so thanks for watching this one and go figure out how to make a peanut. Bye.